Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is, what is a standing wave? And we want to know, what is the difference between a traveling wave and a standing wave? And how and why is a standing wave formed? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. When a transverse wave is introduced into a medium, we see a collection of crests and troughs lined up in consecutive fashion. The movement of this pattern of crests and troughs is what we refer to as a traveling wave. You can observe a traveling wave whenever a wave is introduced into an unconfined space, a medium that seems to have no end to it. The motion of an ocean wave across the ocean surface is an example of a traveling wave. This motion remains observable until the traveling wave meets up with an obstacle in its path, with the end of the medium, or with the boundary to another medium. Now let's consider a wave introduced into a confined space, a medium that has a clear end to it. An example would be a wave that I shake into the end of a 5 meter long slinky. That wave would continue to move towards the end of the slinky and upon reaching the end of the slinky we can expect something to happen. That slinky wave would reflect and bounce back the opposite direction and in the process of reflecting it would undergo some inversion. The crest would turn into a trough. The result is I would now have two traveling waves moving through that slinky in opposite directions. But instead of seeing two traveling waves moving through the slinky, I would see the result of the interference of the wave I shake in on one end and the reflected wave that comes back off the other end. And that result is an irregular and non-repeating pattern. It would be very difficult to detect the sight of two traveling waves in a confined space such as this amidst the irregular motions of the individual particles. When a wave is confined to a small space, it is possible to view the medium vibrating in a regular and repeating manner as long as you introduce waves into it with just the right frequency. This animation portrays a red wave moving to the right and a blue wave moving to the left. Those are traveling waves, but you would not observe the traveling wave. Instead, you would observe the interference of those two traveling waves, and that would be the purple wave. And if you watch the purple wave, you'll notice it's vibrating up and down in a repeating and regular manner. You'll also notice that there's points along the medium of this, of this purple wave that appear to not be moving at all. That's what makes this a standing wave, a wave pattern with permanently positioned points that appear to be standing still. A standing wave consists of nodes, points of node displacement. Those are represented by the orange dots in this diagram. In between every orange dot, you'll notice there's a purple dot. And those purple dots aren't nodes, they're the opposite of nodes and we call them antinodes, points of maximum positive and negative displacement. All standing waves consist of patterns like this with nodes and antinodes. This animation depicts a blue wave moving to the right and an orange wave moving to the left, and those are traveling waves, but you would never see traveling waves. Instead, you'd see the interference that results from the traveling waves, and that would be the green wave that you see here, the so-called standing wave. But do note that standing waves are not actually waves whatsoever. Instead, they are interference patterns that result from the interference of two waves having the same frequency moving in the opposite directions along the same medium. In order to understand the interference nature of these traveling waves and of the standing wave, I've taken five still frames from this animation and what you're going to note is that in all of these frames the nodal positions are points where destructive interference takes place and the antinodal positions are points where constructive interference takes place. Here is my first diagram of a still frame from the animation and if you look at the three antinodes shown you'll notice that those locations, the orange and the blue wave, are both displaced in the same direction, either both up or both down. The Thus, antinodes are formed by the constructive interference. In fact, I've done some measurement on the diagram from the rest position up to the orange and rest position up to the blue, and if I add them together, I get the displacement of the, of the green standing wave. Here's the next still frame. In this case, we're going to start with the nodal positions. There's four of them, two on the ends and two between the ends, and you'll notice at each of the nodal positions, the orange wave is up and the blue wave is displaced down, or vice versa, and they're displaced up and down 
down the same amount such that when you add those displacements together by the principle of superposition you end up getting zero displacement for the green wave complete destructive interference and cancellation of one another now that happens at all four of the nodes and at all four of the anti nodes the the orange and the blue wave are displaced in the same direction and when you add their displacements together you get the displacement of the green wave here's our third example and here we're going to focus upon the nodal positions because at the anti nodal positions are kind of covered by the green wave but if we look at the nodal positions once more we notice orange is up and blue is down and they're up and down by the same amount so thus there's complete cancellation of one another at these four nodal positions here's my four still frame you're going to get the same thing out of this at the nodes you have destructive interference and at the anti nodes you have constructive interference and here's the last example of a still frame that's why we say a standing wave is an interference wave pattern and not an actual wave the key to establishing a standing wave within a confined medium is to vibrate that medium at just the right frequency. Now there's not just one frequency, but several frequencies with which you could vibrate the medium at and get a standing wave pattern to form. Any one of those frequencies within the set of frequencies is known as the harmonic frequencies. And the, and the standing wave pattern that develops as a result of that vibration at a harmonic frequency is known as a harmonic wave pattern. It will be the topic of the next video in this video tutorial series. Now to illustrate the importance of perfect timing, consider this animation here. One way to get a standing wave is to introduce a wave crest at the exact moment that the previous wave crest is reflecting off the end of the, of the medium. That will create a wave crest coming in and meeting a reflected wave crest exactly in the middle of the medium, resulting in destructive interference in the middle of the medium and the formation of a nodal point there. And the node will always be there whether I put a trough into the medium at the exact same time the previous trough is reflecting or a crest when the previous crest is reflecting. And therefore, a nodal point is formed in the middle and that's a standing wave pattern. Other ways to do it would be to introduce a crest at the exact moment that the previous crest reaches the halfway point or the two-thirds point or whatever you have there. The point here is that timing must be perfect. It must be vibrated at one of the harmonic frequencies. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have an awesome simulation on standing wave formation, and going along with it is a concept checker, which is a great way to check for your understanding. And finally, you have a tutorial page that is a great way to brush up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.